everybody. So, we have been out of internet now since yesterday. First we were out of electricity from the day to late in the evening uh, and then we never got back to internet. And today it's Monday and we still don't have an internet and there's like a big cable that is broken and we don't know when it's gonna be fixed. You know, when you live out here in the woods, um, you're not really prioritized when you get problem with internet or electricity or anything. So we don't really know when we're gonna get it back. Hopefully today or in the evening or maybe tomorrow. We don't, we don't really know. It's like the worst month when this can happen because it's soon Christmas and there's so much to do. And like all my job is dependent on internet. And right now we can't even make a phone call. So if something would happen, you know, in the village, you can't even call an ambulance or anything. You're just totally disconnected from the world. And I mean, that's good in a way. Sometimes I really like when that happened, but it's not really good when you have a lot to do. Because it just makes you feel so much more stressed. So now I'm on my way to the closest village, you know, Mykkeljansjö. You have heard about it before in earlier vlogs. That's the place where I rented a house for my studio last year. Or actually earlier this year and that's where my beautiful cow Han lives during the winters so I'm gonna go there now and see if they have internet and phone connection because I need to make some calls um, yeah I hope so <laughs> why did this happen now <laughs> why no it's December all right I'm gonna continue driving now I'm here in Mykkeljensje just outside their little store. They have a little grocery store here. I think it might be the best grocery store in the world because it's super small but they have <laughs> so many things and uh, it's it's a very tiny village. It's only like 70-80 people living here and it's really hard for small villages like this to keep a grocery store alive. But the people that live here they are really you know fighting for it. They are give off their time and energy to to make it work and I think that's amazing. <sighs> I finally have internet again but they have also been out of internet and electricity. They just got it back. I just wrote to Frida now and she's the farmer that lives here. She has a farm where my cow Shanna, Shanna lives. Wow it's so hard to speak Swedish and English sometimes at the same time because the words pronunciation is so different. She asked if we should take a fika, you know, take a coffee. Oh my god. The weather is just so boring today. It looks so grey. Hopefully it will be colder soon. Hey, Hannah. <laughs> hey, come on. I should have locked the gate. I should have thrown away the key. Then I'll be fine with this. really good to see my cow as well. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to have her back in Grunchan in the summer again, on the green fields. Now I'm on my way home again. Hopefully we have internet now, but I don't think so. <laughs> A crisis meeting. We still don't have an internet and we have a lot to do, but we can just sit here and drink some coffee. <laughs> internet is still dead. Yeah. Give me five. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go and uh, see if they're working with the cable out in the forest. Me and my mom is gonna take the car. Hey. hey. Doesn't seem like there are any cars here, so probably they are not working on this yet. We need to be careful because the cable had fallen on the ground. Every day we go in here because we 
We actually keep the fire alive all day, unless when we're sleeping. The, there was actually someone uh, that watched my vlog, uh, that saw all the wood, and he was like, wow, that's wood for so many years and so many people. And I was like, what? No, this is enough wood, hopefully, for this winter. In the beginning it was... Yes, it was all the way here. Actually, we don't have so much wood left now, when I look. Oh no! <laughs> what? It's only December! I haven't actually thought about that until I looked now when I was talking about this. It's only December and we have to keep the fire alive until May. At least we need it for January, February, March and April. No, me neither. What are we gonna do? Burn our furniture. <laughs> As you see, it takes a lot of wood to keep the house warm. Lucia tomorrow and I think this is the first year ever that I haven't had any time at all to prepare something for Lucia. It's, uh, it's cold outside today. It's uh, minus 25 Celsius degrees right now. Uh, but it's beautiful, as always. It's like when it's super cold, it's always super beautiful. Hmm. It seems like the camera is getting a bit weird. I don't know if on the display it looks like the camera is drunk or something. I guess the cold is not so good for the camera equipment. Alltså jag hade gjort vad som helst för att ha det så här kallt hela vintern. Det kommer det vara så här. December, januari, februari. Mm. Jag skulle behövt mer ved. Ja. Det är så lite. Ja. What are you doing? Shovelin. So tomorrow the chimney cleanser comes. <laughs> <laughs> ja, jag funderar faktiskt på det. Ja, vad heter att sotare? Att so sotare va? The, the, the one who cleans the chimneys comes mm. and we have to uh, shovel away for him so he can come up to the roof and also we have to move the, the ladder. Mm. So... <laughs> Love your hat. <laughs> hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Won't see it now Pack our bags and get in that car So good morning, it's a new day and it's almost minus 30 degrees, <sighs> so refreshing, no mosquitoes as we say here in the north. <laughs> Couple of turns 
when it's it's this cold, it's like when you breathe, <laughs> the, the nostrils. Do you say that? Mm -hmm. The nostrils shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> shrimp. Shrimp. <laughs> How do you say? Shrimp. Shrink. Shrink, you know. Shrink. Shrink. You. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Welcome to Grunshan, a warm and cozy paradise. Hey, Mr. Coldy. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> How beautiful isn't this? You should always have it like this. Okay. And look, you're also beautiful, babe. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable how, how they can take it with their little paws. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's very cold outside and inside when this one freezes to ice. Rose hip soap again! Whoops. So the time is 12 in the day now and the sun just rose. rose. <laughs> and in a little while it's gonna go down again. Mm. I just feel so happy when it's sunlight now. Okay, we're outside now, <laughs> right? I really hope the camera can take this because it's really cold outside now. It's like 26 minus Celsius degrees. I've been struggling so hard with this vlog <laughs> um, because of this uh, scene that I'm taking now uh, where I sit down and talk to you. Uh, and that's because I, I felt that I really needed to, to share something with you because we, we are in a situation that just drains me so much that made me feel so depressed lately and uh, I just be feeling so sad and I mean I don't need to share it with you but if I don't do that I feel like I can't continue vlogging in a way because it's easier when I just do a blog post. It's easy to, to not say everything. And it's just something with vlogging that uh, it's, it feels like I open up so much more. Because you get to see me, you hear me. You, I, I share so much more than I do in my normal blogs as I usually do. Uh, and it feels more important to me to, to be honest with stuff. Especially things that really affect me and our lives. So yeah, I've been struggling so much with this because this is the third time I tried to record this and uh, I did sev several days ago, I, I tried to sit down and talk and share, you know, my feelings and what's going on. Uh, but it just, I just complicated everything so much. I talked for so long, but I missed out some things and, and I was too sensitive. <laughs> um... I mean, I, I still feel the same feelings, but um, I feel more stabilized now. Maybe I can just share with you uh, what I feel without making it too long <laughs> and too complicated. And also, I mean, this is not a super serious thing, but it's very uh, huge for me and for you one and for people living here. Um, so there is a big reason to why I felt so sad lately. Uh, I mean, there's many small reasons as well. Uh, it just feels like a shitty time right now. Uh, I'm stressed out and there's so much to think about and I feel no inspiration and, and... But it is all because of this big reason. I mean, it affects all spectrums of my life. Uh, so, to explain to you in the best way what's going on, <laughs> uh, I have to start seven years ago. Seven years ago I lived here. Uh, I had lived here for one year. I had survived my first winter and uh, I mean life was good. I was starting with the photography and the writing and the blog and but that summer all the people that lived here in this village and other village around uh, we got some terrible news. There was this big company uh, called Forska 
that had sent in an application to the municipalities here. They wanted to build the biggest wind turbine park in Sweden. Here, <laughs> on the other side of the lake. Like two, three kilometers from here. And uh, I mean, I guess it would be fine with five, ten wind turbines. But this was uh, over 200 wind turbines. And uh, they would be 210 meters tall. Uh, with flashing intensive white light. And they would build over 100 kilometers of roads in the forest. Um, I have so hard to find the words. But um, there's so much I want to say about this. Like the wind turbine industry is a sensitive subject. I know that. Uh, but uh, making so big industries in this beautiful nature areas uh, I mean it we were shocked we were so many people that were shocked the people living here and the Sami people that have their reindeers here during the during the winters um, this is why this is so hard to speak about because I feel like I want to talk so much about there's so much to say about this but okay I mean I knew from that day that I might need to move away from here because uh, if they're gonna make the biggest industry <laughs> In this area I'm not gonna be able to live here where many people they're not gonna be able to stay and but it was a long process um, they got yes from our the from the municipality but people were fighting against and trying to to say no and the process went further to I don't even know how you say like authorities or instance for seven years I thought about this wind turbine park every day for seven years I every day thought that I might need to move away from here. Uh, it's been a torture for seven years because I've never known if I can stay here. I don't know if I could have my future here. I love this place so much uh, because of so many things for the nature, for I have my roots here. I, it's just so much love for this place and it's uh, it's been such a pain to go through this and not to, to know. Uh, so when I met Johan three years ago, uh, we've been struggling a lot as well because when we met, we both felt like we, you know, we started planning more in future. We wanted to, we dreamt about having a bigger house. We dreamt about, you know, having plans for the future. But we felt that we could not even renovate our living room <laughs> because uh, we wanted to know first that can we stay here. So for a while, me and Johan, we was like, can we can we stand every year we were like how long is this process gonna take we just wanted to know but then in the spring this year uh, we got the wonderful news that uh, the company had got a no from the last uh, authority or instance I don't know what to call it in English but the reason was not because of uh, they would destroy the nature or move away the land for the Sami people and the reindeers or uh, for yeah, for destroying the nature area. It was not because of that. The reason was something about the placement of the wind turbines. They had not done the application well, so they got a no. I will never forget that feeling, that relief. <laughs> Me, Joan, my mom, we were just screaming out of happiness. And I just felt that I moved here for the first time in a way. I felt that okay. Now I live here and I know I have my future here. I can continue live here and I don't know. We were just so happy. So yeah, this was half a year ago. And since then we just knew that we can stay here. And so we have, you know, made a lot of plans and, and dreams about the future. How we're going to continue our lives here. And uh, it's just been feeling so amazing, especially lately. I know I've been mentioned in earlier vlogs that so much exciting things are happening. And... Uh, I've just been so happy because <laughs> just a while ago uh, we found out that we might have a chance to to uh, buy our dream house here. It's like a little farm, it's super old and beautiful and there's an old barn that we uh, was planning to renovate to have uh, our jewelry making and the packing the prints and you know everything like that. 
and I, I dreamed about that for so many years <laughs> and and now we saw a chance that this might be true we can continue live here in the house we love we can continue doing what we love and we have space for it we don't need to rent a lot of houses everywhere we can have our own little place yeah I don't know I just felt so incredibly happy so incredibly happy and that's why I said that this is gonna be an exciting year 2019 because probably a lot of things will happen that will you know be really good for our lives and uh, you know I want to share with you <clears throat> but uh, so it was about one week after we uh, found out that we might be able to buy our dream house and you know the barn and everything you know all our dreams uh, one week after that we got some terrible news um, the company Forska was gonna send in a new application for the huge wind turbine industry here um, Um, they were gonna redo the process again and I knew that now they might get a yes because <laughs> they have they have fixed the, re the placement of the winter bees uh, I can't even describe in words how how I felt after that uh, I mean the first week uh, we got to know about it it was still like a bit unreal and I we both and we, we all thought that, no, th this can't happen, the, the municipality should say no now, because they also continue to build hundreds of these uh, wind turbines, like everywhere in the nature areas around in the north of Sweden. Uh, that's a big problem. <laughs> I mean, they don't build them where they need them, they build them in these nature areas, because there's too few people to complain. So first, uh, I was a little bit positive about this. I thought that, no, no, I mean, this can't happen. Uh, then. Then last week, uh, we, we read in the newspaper, I think, that the municipalities around here are going to invest even more in Wind Turbines Park. Um, so last week, when we found out about this, uh, it felt like our world just fell apart. My heart broke. <laughs> because, you know, we might need to move away from here. And... <laughs> You know, it just came in the worst timing ever. Okay, most people that live out here, we, we live here for one reason. And that reason is nature. The silence, uh, the night sky, because there's no light pollution, uh, the beautiful seasons, you know, the quality that you get here. I guess most of you understand what I mean because you have maybe seen my films or my photos you know there is something special with places like this that are far away from from cities from noise from light pollution there's something magical about it you you feel connected to something that i think many people today have forgot we are we are so disconnected and i i've been that too you know i used to live in a city and i felt so far away from what i was longing for so we have this beautiful nature outside. We have these cold winter days and the northern lights on the sky. But you also have to pay a big price to live here, you know. You, you have to prioritize away a lot of things in your life. I mean, you have to drive far to get to the grocery store. And if you gotta go to the city, it takes a whole day. And the roads are so crappy, both in the winter time and in the summertime. The, the phone reception is awful and the internet is super slow and if you live in an old house like we do you have to spend like the whole winter trying to keep warm i mean it's it's a lot of struggle to live here it's not easy it's not romantic at all but it's all about what you choose to see and the city can offer you a lot it can gives you a very comfortable life if you you know have a good place to live and you live close to everything but but that doesn't interest me at all because i want this so I have prioritized away all the, the good things that the city can give you to have this. And most people living here, they have done the same, you know. We only live here because of this one reason. So that's why this hits us so hard. It's because if this wind turbine industry is gonna pop up here, 
then that one reason is taken away from us. There's no reason for us to live here anymore. There will be no, no silence anymore. There won't be these amazing night skies because there will be so much light pollution all over this place. There will be explosions in the mountains and, and the Sami people, the indigenous people of Sweden and Norway and Finland, they, they can't uh, have their reindeers here anymore in the winters. And you know, all these things that matters a lot to us, it's, it's gonna be taken away. So there's no, no reason to live here anymore. But I think what hurts me the most is the nature here, the wildlife that's gonna be destroyed. Uh, because I know uh, we can move, we can still be all right, you know, <laughs> we can still survive, but the forest can't. This place will be nothing what it is today. And that's what hurts me. Because there is not so many places like this no more. There's very hard to find a place that is so quiet that the only thing you can hear is the blood rushing in your ears. Often when people come here for the first time, the first reaction is the silence. They're like, they have never been in a place that are so quiet. And I understand that because it's hard to find. I just can't stop wondering why, why the municipalities up here don't see the value in the nature. They don't care about what people here think. They don't care about how much people love this place. And they, they don't care about the animals or the Sami people. They don't care about us at all. You know, the northern parts of Sweden has been treated very bad by, by Sweden for many years. Because, uh, you know, there's not so much people to live up here. Up here there is... They are beginning to use the northern parts of Sweden more like an energy industry and not energy for, for the people living up here, but they take it down to the big cities or sell it to other countries. Like the energy they will get from this wind turbine park here is not for Sweden actually, it's for Germany. Uh, and I mean, <laughs> well, you can talk about helping each other. I mean, it's nothing wrong about that, but it's just that why, why on earth are they doing it here? Why are they continuing to kill the nature? It just breaks my heart because there are already so many places, you know, close to cities where there is already noise, there is already traffic, there is already light pollution. Why not put them where they have already destroyed the land? I mean, now I've talked about this for so long again. Um, because it's a heavy subject and I under totally understand that this might not interest so many of you but I, I guess I do it for me because I need to to be honest with you maybe the municipality will say no and there will be nothing uh, I would be so happy <laughs> whereas so many people here that would be so happy I don't really dare to hope that they will say no because why would they? there's so much money in this Oh, in January we have a meeting with some of the politicians in the municipality. I hope that we will get an answer of what they think, so we know. Because we are not ready to wait anymore. We are not ready. So, so if we get the feeling that this will be a long process, then, then we will try to get away from here. And I have no idea where we will go. This thing has uh, dragged me down so much lately. I've been crying every day because of this, because I just feel so lost. And I mean, <laughs> there is bigger problems in the world than this, but for us uh, personally, this is affecting us so much, of course, because we don't know if we can stay here. So now you know, <laughs> now you know. And of course, I will let you guys know if anything happens, you know, I will keep you updated, of course. What I hope with this video is also that uh, whether you are positive or negative to, to wind turbines, uh, I hope you get a perspective from someone that, uh, you know, need to move because of these parks. Because it's happening in so many places now. I'm sorry the battery died again. So yeah, this is, this is making me feeling really depressed right now. And it's like two parts of me. Uh, because one part of me knows that 
you know, everything is gonna be alright, and everything is alright in a way. I mean, if you compare to other things, I mean, we're all healthy, we have food, we have warmth, everything is okay, and we will be okay no matter what. These sad feelings, I can't control them. It's like a sorrow, I think. Many mornings now, I, I don't even feel like I go up, because I feel like everything is meaningless. And it's a sorrow, it's, it's made me really depressed. I guess that's how it is when you might lose something that you love so much. And also, of course, when something bad happens, other things come as well. <laughs> the other day I uh, discovered that one of my absolute favorite forests uh, were gone. Um, this has happened to me three times now. You know, <laughs> we have a lot of forests around here, but not all forests are the same. You can find these more old forests that has very good energy. <sighs> yeah, you know, and during the years I've lost two of my favorite forests that I've loved so much. You know, it's places where I've gone to take photography many times and I know they just have something special. Now I had this forest that I called my Kuling forest. I always go there in, uh, you know, the summertime or spring or autumn, whenever it's not snow, because uh, it's like five minutes from the village and uh, you drive up a little road and there's this beautiful forest with beautiful big rocks and uh, yeah, it just has something special and I always go there to practice curling because I don't want to be in the village when I sing because I don't want people to hear me when I practice um, So I always go there and I often bring nanok and you know, I eat berries and just love life <laughs> and uh, So this forest I have been going to almost every morning and every night for so many years And now when I drove by that little road the other day the forest was cut down there was not a tree left. I don't know, I just got so sad. And that's also a sorrow for me right now that the forest is gone. Every time I've lost a forest that I love, it feels like losing a friend. Literally, you know. If I'm sad, I go to that forest or I'm happy or I'm singing, you know, I, I share so much things in the, with that forest in a way. And, and when it's gone, it, you just feel it so strong because you can feel that they are not there anymore. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. Not now. I mean, I, I'm aware of this forest industry. I just thought that I would have this one at least for a couple of years. the stone there in the middle it's covered with snow now but I did a, a little video once sitting on that stone playing with the, the fireweed seeds it's not as beautiful as it used to be so I mean in the middle of this bad news with the winter bean parks the forest uh, hits really hard as well yeah it, I feel so empty now I don't have it anymore <sighs> I'm just so relieved that I finally <laughs> got to say what I wanted to say. Um, and now, now you know that my heart is very heavy right now. I'm gonna try to just take one day at a time. <sighs> now I think I'm gonna go inside and I'm finally gonna start to edit this vlog. <laughs> it took me so many days. I can't believe this. Sometimes it's just so hard to talk about things that are sensitive or things that that affects you so much and if you have not listened to all of this it's totally fine I understand that this is not super interesting uh, and if you have listened uh, thank you so much that you did that that you want to hear my feelings and uh, listen it means a lot it really means a lot if you are struggling with something too uh, which I guess many of you do I mean we're humans we we feel a lot. Uh, I just want to uh, to send you all a big hug and 
also let you know that everything is gonna be okay no matter what let's stay strong okay let's continue to follow the flow that's what I've heard <laughs> okay my sweet friends uh, no matter where you are in Sweden United States Russia Canada India <laughs> I mean you're from so many places uh, I hope you are having a wonderful weekend because it's Friday today <laughs> and uh, yeah I see you very soon okay and thank you again for watching my video you are the best bye bye